When it comes to scaling your brand online, there's two main metrics that we constantly have to monitor to ensure that we're moving in the right direction with our marketing and with our efforts. And that is customer acquisition costs and lifetime value. My team at TVG manages millions in ad spend for various fitness brands, including supplements, wellness products, e-commerce, Shopify brands, all the way to fitness coaches and info products. And CAC and LTV are two of the most important metrics. I'm gonna break down in this video exactly how to use those metrics, what they exactly mean, and how to use those metrics to make educated decisions and improve your marketing efforts. So first, let's start with CAC, customer acquisition costs. Now, CAC, typically the way that I look at it is the total amount of spend or marketing efforts to acquire a customer. So oftentimes, CPA is something that you might see in your Facebook ads or Google ads, cost per action, cost per acquisition, uh, but CAC is more all-encompassing. So I do monitor those metrics within the ad account because that speaks to me on a per ad set, per campaign, per ad level, how much it is costing me to acquire a customer, but CAC more so as a blended, as a more so seeing your total marketing spend and divide that by the total new customers to see how many customers you acquired and how much of that actually cost you. So in order to calculate CAC for your business, you might look at just your ad spend. So just ad spend, that would be your cost for acquiring a customer. But I also do things like including things like your video editors, if you're creating YouTube videos here, if you're paying for an appointment setter, if you're sending DMs, or if you're doing other things, paying for subscriptions, apps that are related to sales and marketing for your brand or business, you might consider those costs a part of the cost to acquire a customer. So on a monthly, on a weekly, on a yearly basis, you wanna see, hey, you know, you watch Shark Tank, they always ask, how much is it currently costing you to acquire a customer? It's important to know this number because if you know this number, then you can actually scale. And the way that you scale is understanding your CAC and your lifetime value. So your CAC, your target CAC, all depends industry to industry. But obviously, if you're looking to be first purchase profitable, you might wanna look at what your profit margin is for that first product or that first payment to see, okay, this is my break even front end CAC, right? So let's just say you have a product and you have 50% profit margins on this product and it costs $100. Well, your break even front end CAC is simply your profit margin there, about $50. If you're above that, you're losing on that first purchase. And if you're low, way below, then you're making a lot of profit on that first purchase. Again, it depends on industry to industry. A supplement brand might actually lose on that first purchase because they're looking for repeat customers to keep buying again and again over the next year versus something that's more like an ice plunge or an ice bath, you know, those big things that you buy once or a mattress, you're really, really looking for profitable first purchase CAC because there's not so much lifetime value in that product. So it depends industry to industry, but the main goal is that you wanna be profitable on the front end if you don't have a strong lifetime value. So lifetime value is how much a customer is worth to you. Now, lifetime value oftentimes is calculated as lifetime revenue, right? But it's important to understand that CAC, when we're talking about CAC, that's a cost to you which means that would eat into your profit versus if you're just looking at lifetime value and you're only looking at revenue, that takes into account your cost of goods sold. So some things that we like to do is figure out lifetime value, but also your lifetime gross profit, right? How much profit does this customer bring to you over 90 days, six months, a year, five years, you know, depending on the industry that you're in. And the beauty of knowing your lifetime value and depending on industry that you're in, the more flexible that you can be on the front end, right? There's a famous saying by Dan Kennedy that says, the business that can spend the most to acquire a customer wins, because that means that they can just outbeat all their competition. If you're a supplement brand, you know that someone purchases a product and they stick around forever, and you can beat all your competition by spending a ton on customers and just winning from purely advertising standpoint. Now, of course, not every company can do that, but it's just important to know that if you know that customers stick around for a while, they love your brand, then you can be more flexible on the front end to acquire customers. Now, the caveat with that is that if you're just banking on lifetime value, you need to be able to float the cash. And of course, lifetime value is theory. I mean, it's analytics, right? It can be reliable because you're looking at past data, but will this continue? Will this trend continue to go on? Will customers keep buying your brand, your product over time? That's a bet that you have to make as a company, as a business owner.
So how do you actually calculate lifetime value? Well, the way that I typically do it is you first have to look at the time horizon, right? You look at 90 days or 100 days or a year and you figure out how many customers that you have and then how many orders that you have. If you have 100 customers and they purchase 150 times, then the frequency is 1.5, right? If you have 100 total customers in that time span and you have 150 orders, the frequency is 1.5. That means for every customer, on average, they purchase 1.5 times. Now you multiply that by your average order value, and you can see that over that time span, let's say or average order value was $100. Well, the lifetime value was $150. So if the single order was $100 and the lifetime value was $150, let's say in 90 days, then you might be able to spend $75, $80, $90 dollars to acquire that customer if it's worth it to you. But that just gives you a better idea of if people are sticking around, if your retention tactics such as your email marketing, your content, your branding, is that keeping people around and keeping them buying? Or are people getting in, trying your product and they're out the other door because your product's not good enough, your brand's not good enough, you're not reaching out to them and doing retargeting and remarketing on a consistent basis. So CAC and LTV are those two North Star metrics that we look at as growth marketers when we're spending on advertising, when we're sending emails, when we're doing all these things to drive direct revenue, we need to keep an eye on these metrics in order to scale. And the way that we do scale is if we know our customer acquisition cost is a certain number and we set that KPI and we know our lifetime value is a certain number and we keep that KPI, then we can keep putting money into it, scaling ad spend and seeing those numbers adjust accordingly, right? So if our CAC stays around, let's say $50 and our lifetime value is $200 over a year, we can keep spending because we know that our target CAC is $50. As long as we're staying within there, we can scale our ad spend up. So how frequently am I looking at these metrics? Really on a monthly basis, I'd recommend to look at these metrics when you're scaling. You can look at it as on a daily or weekly basis, but like I said, oftentimes it's not as visible, right? You have to kind of look at all your finances. You have to do those calculations. I know your Shopify brand, Triple Whale does this, has a view of some 90 day lifetime value. There's many ways that you can try to calculate it. But again, oftentimes it's pulling a bunch of data sources. So looking at it on a monthly basis will really help. And then seeing those trends in the ad account, like I said, you can see your cost per acquisition, you can see repeat purchase rate, and you can see all those other metrics to see it on a more daily basis. So CAC and LTV are your North Stars when it comes to scaling. Hopefully that gives you clarity on what those metrics are and how we look at those metrics as we scale businesses online. Again, my name is Patrick O'Driscoll. I work with seven and eight figure brands, mainly in the health and fitness space to help them scale. And if you would like to book a call down below or apply to work with me, you can do so by looking at the description down below. I look forward to meeting with you. Have a fantastic rest of your day.